If you hit a block while solo mining Bitcoin, you get 6.25 Bitcoin. But how do you do that and how likely is that to actually happen, especially when all you have are these USB miners? That, plus an interview with someone who actually did hit a block solo mining on Bitcoin miners like these, is what's coming up in this video. Warning, there are people pretending to be me in the comments and on social platforms. I'll never ask you to add me on WhatsApp or Telegram, and I'll never ask you to send me money, crypto, or your personal information. All right, so please be careful, use your common sense, and don't let any of these imposters fool you. All right, now back to the video. Hey, how's it going, Bitcoin heads? Thanks for clicking on my video. Seb Heslo here and a while back bitcoinmerge.com sent me three of these you know bitcoin asics and i already made a showcase video showing you you know how to set them up uh, why i think they're interesting as well as profitability when mining on a pool with these and in that video i also do mention that you can technically solo mine on these because they are after all bitcoin asics but what exactly is solo mining and how do you set it up well that's what we'll look at first in this video and then we're actually gonna have a look at an interview i did with someone who did hit a block mining on usb miners like this and then finally we'll do some math to see what the actual you know likelihood of hitting a block with usb miners like this is so stick around for that so what actually is solo mining? Well, as a miner, you only actually really get paid when you solve a block on the blockchain. And currently, the reward for doing so on the Bitcoin blockchain is 6.25 Bitcoin. But as mining grew, people started noticing that solving a block on your own started getting really difficult. And not only that, you could just also end up having really bad luck and never solving a block. And to fix this, pool mining was invented. And how mining pools work is that whenever anyone in the pool solves a block, the mining reward gets distributed evenly among all the miners in that pool based on the amount of mining power or hash rate that they're providing to the pool. And basically, solo mining is the opposite of pool mining. You mine completely on your own in hopes that you might solve a block. And if you do solve a block, you get the full block reward of 6.25 Bitcoin all to yourself. Now, of course, the lower your hash rate is, the lower your actual probability of solving a block also is. But also, luck is still involved in solving a block. Because solving a block is basically just having your miners guess random numbers until someone's guess actually turns out to be correct. So it could still happen no matter how low your hash rate is. And not only can it theoretically happen to people with low hash rate, it actually has happened to people with low hash rate twice this year already where miners with pretty low hash rate has solved a block and got that full 6.25 bitcoin block reward all right so let's have a look at how to set up these little usb miners for solo mining but first i just want to show you where you can get them from so obviously bitcoinmerch.com um, they have them in stock from time to time you can get them for 250 dollars or even less than uh, and i actually believe you can use the code sebs fintech to get four percent off uh, on top of that so that's pretty cool However, if you're really desperate for them, then they are also available on Amazon, I just noticed. So I'll be leaving some you know, affiliate links in the description for them uh, to buy there. Obviously, they are more expensive on Amazon, as is the case with most things, right? Anyway, let's move on to how to solo mine. So to set up solo mining on these USB sticks is actually extremely simple. It is just like mining on any other pool. You just change the pool address to this one, which is the solockpool.org. So yeah, just as you do with, you know, mining basically anything in a terminal window, uh, just point your miners to this address here, which is solo.ckpool.org, and the port is 3333. And then for the user, just, you know, fill in your Bitcoin wallet address, and that is basically all you have to do. So for example, how that would look for me is I would just copy this address. And then when I edit my, you know, string that I put into the terminal here, I just enter that like so. And then as for a username, I would just have to enter my Bitcoin address here. So I'm just gonna copy the default one that came with this example doc here. Boom, like that password nothing just x and that's it then you just run those commands in your terminal and you're solo mining on the ck pool 
So earlier this year, mining kind of made headlines when someone with really low hash rate actually managed to solve a block solo mining Bitcoin. And that person, whose online name is Sledge001, actually revealed himself and provided proof of hitting the block on the online forum bitcointalk.org. And it actually turns out that he managed to hit that block solo mining on this exact kind of USB miners. So I contacted him and he very generously agreed to answer some of the questions I had for him regarding his farm setup and just his experience in hitting a block mining like this. Now, for obvious reasons, he wants to remain anonymous. So what you're about to watch is a reenactment of the conversation I had with him where I'll be playing the part of myself and we got the hobbyist miner fellow YouTube content creator who'll be playing the part of Sledge 001 and also please keep in mind that the conversation might be slightly paraphrased just because of the fact of you know reenacting it right so without further ado my reenacted conversation with Sledge 001 on hitting a block solo mining on little USB miners. All right so what was your initial reaction when you realized that you had hit a block? I was just waking up for the day and checking on my rings, like I traditionally do. I checked my account balances like I normally do and was confused. I thought that's not right. I checked out BTC and saw that the price was just over 30K per coin and then looked at my balance again. At that point, I realized what had happened. I had hit a block. I was still in bed at the time and I told my wife what had happened. It was insane. Truly a state of shock and awe had set in. I then got up and saw that sure enough, I had hit a block using nothing more than USB stick miners. So what did your USB mining farm look like hardware wise? So I was just using 22 to 23 of the Gecko Science Compacts Fs on the Icon USB hubs with USB Arctic fans. Something to keep in mind as well. A few days prior to hitting the block, I was mining with rented hash power from NiceHash to the same address. Now, make no mistake, that when I hit the block, the only thing mining was my compact F miners, which was around 8.75 terahash. The miner that hit the block had nine compact Fs running, which was around 3.5 terahash on an HP Omen gaming PC that was also mining Ethereum. At the time, the network difficulty for VTC was about 26T, and sure enough, the Omen found a share creating the block at 35T. Based on solochance.com, the odds of me hitting that block were once every 435 years. Wow. All right, so how are you running your farm software-wise? Since I already had over 3.5 gigahash on Ethereum and Zill miners running, I figured it would be ideal to have the systems play the BTC lottery while they were running. I can't tell you how happy I am that this strategy actually paid off. Each of my eight GP rigs had a few of the compact apps running on them. So essentially, I was triple mining when I hit Hater. Kano's latest version of CG Miner was used for the BTC mining portion, and I was using Phoenix Miner for my Ethereum and Zill mining. I believe you were running a node and mining to that. What made you decide to do it that way instead of mining to CK's solo pool? Yeah, you're correct. I was running a node and I was mining to that. However, Kano actually convinced me to mine to a well-connected pool instead. This is going to sound funny, but I selected CK solo pool because it was easier to look at the stats. Not knocking Kano's pool, just having to log in every few hours really bugged the crap out of me. Do you have any advice for people wanting to get into solo mining Bitcoin like this? My advice would be take the shot and go for it. Remember that electrical and hardware costs are steep. However, the reward can be great if you're willing to take the chance. There used to be a lottery commercial when I was growing up, and the quote was, you got to play to win. And that's what I did, and I'm still doing today. I would also remind people that heat and noise are also an issue when choosing to mine. So you need to factor these all in before committing to mining. Nice. And finally, is there anything else you wish I would have asked about or anything else you'd like to talk about? Yeah, so since hitting a block, I'm still mining and I'm continuing to grow my Bitcoin farm. Since the Ethereum merge is upon us, I have been selling off my GPUs and buying additional compact apps as well as future bit Apollo BTC miners. I have started using Raspberry Pis to run my compact apps, which max out about 15 sticks per Pi. I will be up to 30 compact apps within the next week. I also have 10 Apollo BTC miners running currently, but I'm gonna be adding a total of 16. Additionally, I've invested into four of the Bitmain S19A Pros, which are 110 terahash units, two of which online currently, 
and with two more coming in the next two weeks. The S19s are running actually at a co-location. And to be clear, all of my BTC miner equipment are in use solo mining on CK's pool. So I think that about wraps it up. Now, of course, the chance of actually solving a block with one of these USB miners is pretty low. And a lot of people actually liken it to playing the lottery, calling it the Bitcoin mining lottery. Now, the difference between a regular lottery and the Bitcoin mining lottery is that in a regular lottery, a ticket is only valid for, you know, one time. But with solo mining Bitcoin like this, you get a new chance to win for every new block, basically every 10 minutes. So it's basically like entering a lottery where, you know, like any lottery, the chance to actually win is pretty low. However, you get a new chance to win every 10 minutes. And of course, the higher your hash rate is, the higher the likelihood of you actually winning becomes. So let's have a look at how to actually calculate that likelihood after a quick word from our sponsor. Wadam. Are you worried about GPU mining profitability after the Ethereum merge? Wish you could get into direct Bitcoin mining, but you don't want to have a super loud ASIC heating up your house 24-7? Well, Wadom makes getting into Bitcoin mining super easy with their complete mining solutions. That includes offering you all the latest ASIC miners, mobile mining containers and power transformers. Or, if you'd rather, they also offer complete hosting services or full facility build-outs. That means that you can run one of your miners in one of their many warehouses. Wadom is the largest distributor of Bitcoin mining equipment in the United States, with their team of over 100 mining experts offering exceptional customer service. They also offer installment payment plans, which makes getting into Bitcoin mining or scaling your current mining operation that much easier. So check them out at wadom.io slash seb or by clicking the link in the video description. All right, so how do you actually calculate the chance of solving a block depending on how much hash rate you have when solo mining Bitcoin? And it's actually a lot simpler than I originally thought. So there are proper ways of calculating it using the network difficulty and all of that jazz. But uh, what I found when doing those calculations and then this, you know, very e easy calculation is that you actually get the exact same result. So let me walk you through how I'm doing this. Uh, easy calculation to figure it out, right? So basically the way we can just think about it is for every block there is one person that's gonna solve it, right? So out of everyone hashing on the network one of those hashes is going to be the correct one that solves it. So all we just need to do then is take, okay, how many hashes is there per block and then there's your chance per hash. So if we look at the Bitcoin network difficulty right now, it's kind of hovering, you know, around 200 million terahashes per second, which then we also need to take into account that each block is once every 10 minutes. So that is, you know, 200 million terahashes, you know, per second for 60 seconds. So basically the chance of a single hash you know, a single number guessed by your miner winning the block, solving the block, is one per 200 million times 600, because, you know, 60 seconds per minute, 10 and 10 minutes. So there you go. That is the chance of a single hash solving um, the block, right? And then, of course, what we have to do is we have to take into account how many hashes we have. So for example, with my little setup of three of these, you know, USB sticks, I get around a thousand giga hash or one tera hash. So one tera hash. So then I just put that into the little calculator I did here. So I have a thousand giga hash. And then basically my chance per block is just what the chance per hash is, which is, you know, this extremely, extremely tiny number. And then multiplying that by what my hash rate is in giga hash per second and then just multiplying that with one trillion because you know one giga hash is a trillion hashes and that gives me my chance of solving the block per my hash rate so that is my chance of solving a block now of course there are many many blocks all the time so what i did was added a little column here which is the chance of solving a block within one year and as we can see here uh, that math is just, you know, my chance of solving a block multiplied by how many blocks there are in a day, which is 144, multiplied by how many days there are in a year, 365. 
and there you go my chance of solving a block statistically on one of these or a set of three of these which is you know what my little bitcoin mining farm is is about 0.000438 percent or another word for saying that is it's about one in 2.2 million or so 2.28 million and just out of curiosity i was like okay what's that in relation to actually winning the lottery and it's actually quite a lot better uh, because i did a quick you know search for it here and it seems the odds of you know winning the lottery is usually one in 292 to 100 and uh, uh one in 302 million so so it's basically more than a hundred times as likely to hit a block uh, mining with three of these than it is to actually win the real lottery within a year um, so there you go uh, now of course uh, this number goes up significantly as you you know increase your hash rate so let's enter a normal ASIC that is on the market right now so a regular ASIC right now gets maybe around 110 tera hash or so which would be 110 one two three all of a sudden, our chance to actually solve a block is just one in 20,000. That's it. So I'll leave a link to this little calculator. You can play around with it in the description of this video. But yeah, that's about it. Now, if you found this video helpful, then please give it one of these. And if you really liked it, you can now join the channel to help support what I do here. It really does make a big difference and it means a lot to me. So thank you. But what you gotta do now is you gotta click on that next video on the screen because this video is over. You can also click the picture on my face to subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate that. But yeah, go click on that next video and I'll see you there. Goodbye. Goodbye, bye-bye.